Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. We March Bahamas officials say they will march on. That story straight ahead. A noticeable increase in voter registration the first working day since Christmas. That story coming up. A body discovered on a Yellow Elder Garden service road. Police now need your help. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs blasts fake news reports on social media. And the protest period for the Boxing Day Junkanoo Parade begins and it may impact parade results. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, leaders of We March Bahamas say they will lead a march on Majority Rule Day despite having their request to occupy Rawson Square rejected. Today, march organizers Renard Henfield and John Boswick Jr. insisted they will not be deterred by what he called blatant attempts to discourage the people's march. Our Jasmine Brown joins us from Rawson Square. Jasmine? That's right, Christina. Both Henfield and Bostwick say they will not be deterred and the march will go on as scheduled. Yesterday, Henfield shared on Facebook a letter from the Cabinet Office denying the group permission to occupy Rawson and Parliament Squares as they did back on November 25th. The letter explained that their march conflicts with another event planned for that day. In that same Facebook post, Henfield insisted that nothing this administration throws at the people or denies the people will deter discourage them. He echoed those same sentiments while speaking in Rawson Square this afternoon, explaining that their request was rejected after weeks of back and forth. He says the move came as no surprise. We were given the runaround, but to basically say, you know, that approval has been rejected. Uh, for us at We March, it's, it's not a surprise. Uh, we've been dished out a hurdle after hurdle with this whole effort to voice the people's concerns. PLP Chairman Bradley Roberts recently said his party will organize a march to rival that one, but he did not give details on where the PLP's march would be. Bostwick says he doesn't feel the cabinet decision was a coincidence, but he says he hopes the other event planned for Ross and Square has nothing to do with the PLP. To hear now that there is an event um, planned in the square for the same date is beyond disappointing. Um, and to me, it is just a, an example of, of, of where we're heading towards totalitarianism, towards the state frustrating the efforts of the citizens to exercise their constitutional rights. This event, I don't know what it is. I'm hoping and praying that once we find out what it is, it is not a PLP event. Their last march from Arawaki to Rawson Square last month drew hundreds of supporters. Henfield says he expects to see a similar response on January 10th. As for if there are still plans to occupy Rawson Square that day, they say that's one of the three options they're weighing. We have three options now. We have the option to march from where we marched the last time and occupy Rawson and uh, Parliament Square peacefully. We have the option that has been suggested to us that we can go ahead down to Clifford Park. We have another option that we can leave um, from where we march to and go to Windsor Park. Whatever the option now, we're going to make a decision between now and January 9th. But I can assure you, you know, we intend to voice the people's concerns. And we, we don't intend to cower and back down from an administration and they work for us. Now as they make their final plans, both men say they will keep anyone interested in the march updated on their next move. Reporting from Rawson Square for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Jasmine. Well, officials at the Parliamentary Registration Department have noticed an increase in voter registration since the Christmas holidays. However, the numbers are still far lower than they were at this same point before the 2012 general election. Kyle Joaquin tells us more. People are showing a keen interest now that they're getting closer towards the election, and we hope that will continue. That's a good thing. Right. Let me just say it's your moral duty as a citizen of this country to, to register. Just about 75,000 people have registered to vote. Parliamentary Commissioner Sherlyn Hall telling our news team that on Wednesday alone, nearly 400 people registered. But while there are 75,000 registered voters, the figure is still fairly low compared to the same period leading up to the 2012 election when there were more than 100,000. The constituency with the largest number of registered voters, Killarney, with 3,176. So it's incumbent on each person to register early. Do not wait for Parliament's dissolved. Once it's dissolved, only persons who registered the day before will be entitled to vote. That's the way the law is written. 
And he said it's not just Nassau, but more people have shown up to register in the Family Islands as well since Christmas. As was the case during the last election cycle, Hall expects a drastic increase in early 2017. When the register closed in 2012, there were 172,128 people registered. But while we're far from that number now, Hall says people shouldn't necessarily compare the situation five years ago to now. As I said before, circumstances change from electoral cycle for electoral cycle. Um, a lot of things change. Um, happen this time that did not happen in 2011. Hall says 15% of the registers so far are people between the ages of 18 and 25, the largest demographic. Voter apathy has been a major concern over the past few months. The Prime Minister recently said he's holding off on announcing a date for the election as he waits for more people to get registered. And with political parties gearing up their campaign machinery, Hall encourages all eligible to honor their constitutional right. There's a principle in law which says ignorance is no excuse of the law. Um, so it is all of our duties as a citizen, your duty, my duty, to um, apply ourselves to the laws of the country. Now again, Hall is encouraging people to go out and register because once Parliament is dissolved, that option of going out to register to vote will be no more. Reporting from the Parliamentary Registration Department for our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Meanwhile, low voter registration figures are a direct indictment of both the Progressive Liberal Party and Free National Movement. That according to leader of the United People's Movement, Greg Moss, who says Bahamians are simply not motivated to vote. I think the people have now taken ownership of their politics. I actually think the people are far ahead of the politicians. And you see that in their vote in the referendum, where they rejected the PLP and the FNM. And you see that in their kind of civil civil unrest, civil, civil um, dissent in refusing to register to vote. There are currently fewer than 75,000 people registered to vote and that represents only 40 percent of registered voters in the country. During a stop in Acklands earlier this month, Prime Minister Christie urged Bahamians to vote, declaring it's not long now until they will be called upon to exercise their democratic right to vote. Moss says he believes the Prime Minister's pleas are falling on deaf ears as voters are seeing through the empty promises and political rhetoric of both the PLP and FNM. We are now at the point where, frankly, I'm happy that we're at the point um, where we are taking politics seriously, where we are realizing this is not political entertainment. What happens in elections and what happens in the House and what happens in governments matter day to day to us and to our kids and to our future. Moss adds that he believes voter registration will see an uptick once Bahamians realize there are viable alternatives to the two major parties. Now you'll start to see people registering to vote because you, they, they now know that they have an alternative. The body of a badly beaten man in his 20s was found wrapped in a blanket just after 1 p.m. this afternoon. Chief Superintendent Clayton Fernander describes what police discovered once they arrived at the service road off Graham Drive in Yellow Elder Gardens. On close examination of the body, it appears though that uh, the deceased was beaten. Uh, we don't have any clear motive at this time, but based on our preliminary inquiries thus far, we believe that the incident did not happen here, that the body was dumped in this general area. Last week, police were called to another murder scene in Yellow Elder Gardens when a man was found shot to death in his Melvern Road home. At this early stage of the investigation, Fernander says police are unable to say if any of the murders in the area are connected. One murder is, is just uh, too much, and uh, we again continue to uh, appeal to members of the public uh, and family members uh, who have information or have family members who are involved in criminal activities to please try to reach out to the police. We are aggressively uh, investigating all of the matters. Uh, I note, as you indicated, that uh, there was a few matters in recent days. Uh, we are aggressively uh, pursuing those, those matters. Police are now following a number of leads in this matter. An autopsy will be conducted to determine the exact cause of death. Anyone with, with information is asked to contact police at 911, 919 or Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS. Still to come on our news, how protests to the unofficial Junkanoo results may change the winner. It appeared to be a Merry Christmas for local merchants. And tonight, our news takes you back in time through 2016. That's coming up when our news returns.